From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello, and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. And once again, right up front on the program today, I just want to say thank you for your prayers. So many of you do uh, write in these, you say how you remember us in your prayer life. And especially going through what we went through, you know, this, uh, not the flu, it was a virus that's going around. But um, that's what you kind of see on top of my husband's lip there. But you still look great to me, Dr. I'm, Jack. I'm getting you lip service. <laughs> there you go. But thank you for your prayers. We're both feeling much better. And uh, we're going to continue to move on. I just want to say it's been a joy to share this rather of a series with you and coming now into something that we've been promising for a while, the kingdom. Oh my, oh my, how wonderful it's going to be to have the fulfillment of the Lord's Prayer. And Jack, I love the Lord's Prayer because when Jesus was on earth, he talked about what we're going to be talking about today, the kingdom on earth. Would you mind if I were to say the Lord's Prayer? Isn't that what yeah, you were saying? Jesus to? taught us to say it. Go ahead. All right. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive it our debtors, and lead us not into, what? Temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Jesus spoke about the kingdom on earth and the will of God being done on earth. Oh, my, oh, my. We're going to be referring to that a lot. Let me just say something program. right now. It is the Father's kingdom. Remember that. But he has chosen Jesus. And in John 1, 1, he called Jesus the Word because he would be the communicator. There are three spirits. There are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. But they're all three spirits. But he says, one of us will have to communicate, and two of us are spirits, and they can't see us. Jesus, will you be that one, yes. And so the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Uh, that is so wonderful. That's 1 John 4, 14. And he said, you will take a body and you will communicate. And so we call you the Word. Later, you will put in the womb of a virgin so you can be born in that world and you will be called Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us because you're God that spirit, and then you're going to be called Jesus, the Savior of the world, amen. But when the kingdom comes, it's my kingdom. And Lord Jesus, you, because you're the word, because you communicate, because they'll be able to see you, you are going to be called the King of the kings and Lord of the Lord. You're going to be the ruler. Oh, amen. the Bible says, Amen. That time, the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of his God, his Father, in that kingdom. But there's going to be another one there. The Trinity always operates together. And so the blessed Holy Spirit, and he's the one that's been coming to me, started a year and a half ago, and he said, you are to arrange the whole world. And I have. We now preach to every human being for the first time in the history of Christianity. Seven billion, six hundred million a week. I got every station, and I'm even adding more. Ten last week. Mm. And the Holy Spirit came again. He Wonderful. said, he also needs to win them, and we're going to. Rexel and I have already won a million, and we're going to get you fired up for the billion souls crusade for the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. But let me go back here for one more minute. This, he's the King of the King and the Lord of the Lords. And it says that 
the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And I said, the Holy Spirit, he's going to be there. And he is called the paraclete. Not parakeet, paraclete. Why? Because that is the term for the comforter. He will fill the world with the nine fruit spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And he says, in the light of that, you don't need the Ten Commandments. You will be living them. Because I, the Holy Spirit, will be filling you. And he said to me a year and a half ago, and it be you, but approved by the Father and, and filled by me. And you are to tell the whole world that Jesus is about to come and set up the kingdom. Get the message out. It's that near. And I've been trying, and I'm going to keep trying. Everything you're going to hear from me for the rest of my life. And I'm going to be 90 in two years from now until my last breath. Jesus saves. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature, every creature. Uh -huh. Go therefore and teach all nations, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to do it. And we're going to do it. Well, God loves everyone, Jack. Yeah. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves the world, but in a very special love for a group a nationality, a group of people, the Jewish people. He loves the Jewish people, not because they were the most in number, but he loved them. Jack, the Bible teaches that, all right? Oh, listen. Any of you Palestinians, you talk about God being your God and you hate the Jew, something is wrong with your Christianity. I'm talking now from God the Father. Are you listening? I did not set my love among you because you were the most of people. You were the fewest, but because I loved you. Let me tell you how much I loved you. And I'm going to put it in terms of like marriage, although I'm a being, a sexless being, but it'll show you what my love really is. First of all, I want you to know, Israel, you're the apple of my eye. Israel, you're my fiancé, my betrothed. Israel, you're my wife forever. I love you. Israel, I'm going to give unto you an everlasting name. There's not going to be a country in the world that's ever going to be able to put you out of existence because I give you an eternal name, and that name is Israel, Jerusalem. And all you guys are trying to get rid of the Jew. You're never going to do it. And I just signed up with a group called Jews for Jesus, 25 groups. And I'm going to back them. I'm going to sponsor them. You do the same. Because we're going to get together and do some great things. Do you know what happens when the Jews come back? They come down in the holy city. Jesus has been building it. He said, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. And he's been building this holy city. It's 1,500 miles wide, long and high. It can store every human being that's ever been born. And it's a place of safety. When the rapture is here, he snatches us up. Why? Because the great war Armageddon is coming. He said, I'm going to keep you from it. 11 100s a second. You know where that city is? We just figured this out. You know we have atmosphere, stratosphere, and so on. Heaven is actually 187 trillion billions of miles in space. And we're there in 11 hundreds of a second because we travel by mind. Up and down. Oh, what a place it's going to be. Now, the Apostle Paul, oh, he loved the Jew because his father, God, loved him. And he said, I love the Jew so much. And he was a, one who hated Christians at one time. And as a Jew now, 
He wants all his people saved. Now, Romans 9, 1. I say the truth in Christ. I know that. My conscience bear me witness in the Holy Spirit. I could wish myself accursed from Christ, accursed in hell forever, if they could get saved. You got to love like that for the Jew, you Palestinians and all the rest. You'll have something. Paul could say, salvation is for the Jew first. And you saw pay any price. Romans 10 says, however, they're blinded right now, still. But chapter 11, here it is. Paul's prayer is going to be answered. Chapter 11, verse 25, all Israel shall be saved. For there shall come a deliverer out of heaven. And his name is Jesus. And he will set up that kingdom on earth. And he will be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And the whole world is going to turn to Jesus. It's going to be a global thing. And from then on, the whole world will know that that's the place where God lives. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What? No other place on earth. Mm. when they come back and set up that kingdom there's a river of blood hundreds of miles long they have to clean it up there are going to be 200 million dead that they bury most of those Muslims you see the Muslims hate this Jesus the Muslims say eight times in the Quran if you believe that Jesus is the son of God You'll burn in hell forever. Some of you knew the people coming into power here and you're using the Quran. You're using a book that blasphemes Jesus. God forgive you. And the name you call our president, one of you Muslim women, to talk that way. God forgive you. God give us people who know God, who love God, the real God. His name is Jesus. 808 times the Bible says Jesus is the way. 400 times names him as the Savior and 408 times it said his head. Shit, but only, only they can get you there. Mm -hmm. And so that does away with all the 1,800 cults and 2,500 false religions. All false Christ, all false prophets. Jesus is the only way. Well, you know, Jack, Praise the Lord, when Jesus comes back, things are really going to be changed. Uh, right now, there's not a love for the Jews. In fact, that's what leads to Armageddon over there, that Jesus stops when he comes back. He's going to stop the battle of Armageddon. But right now, that love for the, the Jewish people is not really in the Middle East. I'd like for you to take a look at some of these headlines that I have right here. Men shouting about killing Jews in London, Kristallnacht, and that, uh, that's a vigil that they had over there. Kristallnacht anniversary, France warns of steep rise in anti-Semitism. You see that? Israel, under fire. They don't love the Jewish people right now. Israel continues manhunt braces for violence as Hamas calls for day of rage. Oh, my goodness. And then the Israeli Defense Force annual report, 1,000 rockets fired at Israel from Gaza wow. in 2018. Can you believe it? They don't love them, Jack. Hamas ceasefire talks with Israel are over. Isn't that sad? They don't even want to try and have peace over there. Again, the Israeli Defense Force cracks down on Hamas cells following wave of attacks. United Nations, I could not believe this, threatens Israel. Huh, the United Nations. And then Rivlin, we can never afford to ignore anti-Semitism. Now that is the Israeli president. Going on, U.S. Defense Department warns travelers visiting Israel. Jack and I have been there 10 times. We saw some violence then, but very, very little. In fact, one time I was downtown Jerusalem and they ushered me out saying, hey, we got a riot going on here. 
but the state defense warns travelers now, if you're going over there, you got to be careful. Trump tells rally never again in wake of synagogue shooting right here. You know what happened in Pittsburgh. Oh, my, oh, my. And there they are, our president and first lady placing stones on a memorial, Pittsburgh and Jerusalem. Hostility increases toward pro-Israel students. Can you believe that one? On U.S. campuses. Not and I'm going to go on one more many, here. Yes, Jack. Many campuses. And somebody, the reason all this is happening, North Carolina State students launched Satanism, huh, Satanism Club. Now, we know that Satan hates Israel. I believe it's connected. Satan is launching all of his hatred toward Israel right near uh, the time that they're going to have that horrible battle over there, and Jesus comes back to stop it. Oh, do you believe this book, Holy Bible? Satan stood up against the Jew. Let me ever read it. Satan stood up against the Jew, First Chronicles 21.1. And I'm going to tell you something. You Palestinians and others call yourselves Christians, you better get into your Bibles. Now I'm really going to shock everybody. Oh, I got the King James Version. No, you don't. Well, I got the Doye Version of the Catholic Church. No, you don't. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Who are these holy men? Uh -huh. The Old Testament, all Jews. Right. The New Testament, 11 right. of the 12 apostles who wrote the Bible were Jews. There's only one man who wasn't a Jew, and his name was Luke, a Greek. And he wrote the book of Luke after his name in the book of Acts. Every single word from cover to cover is written by Jews because God so loved the Jew, no other. They said, I'm going to choose you people. I'm going to choose a Jewish virgin to bring my son into the world. I don't care how you think. I don't care how you feel. I don't care if you're Muslim. And 57 of the nations of the world are Muslim. There are 1,800 of your cults. There are 2,500 of your religions. When you do away with Jesus, you've lost it all. Your religion is meaningless. Get the right thing, Jesus, the Word of God. Oh, amen, Jack. Oh, yes. You know, that's what we can really depend on, the Word of God, because God wrote it. And uh, he used Jewish men, except for the book of Luke, uh, the Greek, who wrote Luke and Acts. Now, we have a wonderful offer for you this week, and I mean wonderful. Some of you have been waiting to really uh, get this into your minds. The, a New World Order? Yes, the Judeo-Christian New World Order. What's it all about? Take a look, please, at the commercial. 2,000 years ago, Jesus, Israel's Messiah, and Christianity's Lord and Savior taught us to pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This appearing of Christ to set up the soon coming Judeo-Christian New World Order is about to happen. According to 1,000 biblical prophecies from the lips and pens of 16 Old Testament Jewish prophets and eight of the 12 New Testament apostles, this will become the most monumental event in history and Micah announces that this will immediately usher in God's final and eternal government. He states, the law will go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem Jerusalem. Christianity's New Testament apostles describe this global ruler as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Isaiah, another prophet of Israel said, Unto us a child is born, virgin birth, and unto us a son is given, second coming of Jesus. When this glorious hour happens, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Wow! Come quickly, Lord Jesus, and deliver us from this global mania, mass slaying, endless terrorism, and unending war. For further details, order coming soon, the Judeo-Christian New World Order. 
And friends, as I said last week, we are including your future A to Z index to prophecy. It's a wonderful book that Jack has written all about prophecy. And you can't go wrong when you read this book. So be sure and order both. Our announcer will be here to tell you exactly how you can receive it. And you'll get it in the mail, so make the call or write to us immediately. I want to go on quickly here. Oh, our time goes so very, very quickly. There are some who really love Israel right now. And you know, our president is one. In fact, our vice president went there and got a standing ovation. The longest oh, in history. Oh, the longest in history with his speech. Well, take a look at this. The UK should follow Trump's lead on Israel by transferring, uh, of course, moving our embassy to Jerusalem. Trump's the first. Uh -huh. Australia to recognize Jerusalem as Israeli capital. Delay embassy move. Now they had to go through a little bit of talk about it, but they want to do it. Bahrain supports Australia. Okay. Recognition of Jerusalem as the Amen. capital. Everywhere. And then Honduras prepared to move embassy for a price, yes, but they're going to do it. Netanyahu, Brazilian leader, said embassy move a matter of when, not if. So many are following in the footsteps of our president, praise the Lord, in moving their embassies to Jerusalem. And of course, when Jesus comes back, that's where he's coming back to Jerusalem. Oh, Jack, I love I'll it. I'll give Israel an everlasting name, and that name is Jerusalem. And they're putting their emphases there. They're getting it ready. Holy Spirit just came again to me the day after Christmas. He says, keep preaching it. Christ is about to return. The embassy is about to be set up. Let the world know the time is short. Amen. Get saved. Just pray that prayer. I'm going to take some extra time right okay. here Amen. to tell people that Jesus is coming so soon. And there's so much going on in our lives. Now, if you were to see Jesus today, what would you, would you really want him to see in your life? What would you really want him to forgive? So often, you know, we don't mind telling a little lie here or there or picking up a little bit of... Um, alcohol and maybe even getting drunk and so forth. So much is going on in this world. People are having illicit sex. Oh, that's all that's going on. Absolutely. Every kind, in every manner. Absolutely, Jack. So much is going on in the world right now. But Jesus will forgive anything, won't he? Yeah, but if they continue and not forgive it and get right, they will be lost in Gehenna, the fires of hell forever. Yes. But that's why Jesus came. Jesus came. I know that if I were to see him right now, oh, Lord, I pray that you'll be able to say my life was what you wanted it to be. And I know that's what you want, too. When Jesus looks at you, and he will, when he looks at you, what do you want him to say to you? Well done, good. That's always the first one, good and faithful servant. Or do you want him to be, you to be ashamed when he sees you? Well, I want you, if you will, to say, Lord, I want to get my life right. You're coming very soon, and I want to get my life right. I want to be ready to meet you. Will you please pray this wonderful prayer with Jack right now, saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me of anything in my life that you don't want there. He died for you. He gave his life for you, and he will forgive you. Jack, will you pray that wonderful prayer? God, you sent your son to be the savior of the world. As a Jew, who a Jewish virgin, through an act of creation. And God, you love the Jew. And I, I can't go to heaven if I have all this hatred and bitterness toward these people you love. God, I, I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for my hatred. I'm sorry for my bitterness. I'm sorry for taking a stand against you, God, and you, Christ, and you, the Holy Spirit. 
and I'm going to change. I'm going to renounce my sin. I'm going to live those Ten Commandments for you, Lord. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to do all those things anymore. But the only way I can do it is through you. The oh, blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin and keeps us from sin. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All oh, things are passed away. All things are become new. You can have that right now. I was reared in the nightclubs. I was alcoholic with my dad. And I found Jesus. And I've won a million souls since. There's hope for you. Father, I receive this Jesus today. Save me now. Jesus, amen. Amen. <laughs> Did you pray that prayer? Did you ask Jesus to cleanse you? You know, what a relief, whoa, to be forgiven and to know that you're not only forgiven, but you just became God's child. Now he's going to walk with you. Please write to me and let me know about it. I'll send you this wonderful little book, First Steps in a New Direction. The Lord wants to walk with you in a new direction. Please write me and let me know about it. Will you please? I want to hear from you. Our mailing address is Jack Benibby Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. Remember to ask for your free copy of the book of First Steps when you write. Now, I love our offer of the week, and it is the Judeo-Christian New World Order, along with your future an A to Z index to prophecy. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order the Judeo-Christian New World Order and the book A to Z Prophecy, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of 4495 to Jack Vanapee Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of 4495 to Jack Vanapee Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so much, Chuck. Make the call right away. We want to get this in the mail to you. I want to leave you with this wonderful thought. God's timetable is not altered by the times. He's got a timetable. Look forward to being in your homes again next week. And until then, always remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. The preceding program was sponsored by the partners of Jack Vanapee Ministries.